little bit of chop on the water. Southwestern is churning it a little bit. Good for flounder. So when we're not catching bass, I really do enjoy these flatfish. We've actually had uh, plenty of place, dab, had sole last year as well. But the flatfish I really wanted was a flounder. I haven't been able to catch one for years. And this short film is about my attempts to catch one. And it's very often someone's first catch when they start sea fishing. But can I get one for love nor money? No. Um, we actually went down to the River Tin a couple of years ago. Didn't catch one there. And the River Tin in Devon is meant to be one of the main places to catch flounder. In fact, there was a £5 7 ounce fish caught there uh, back in 1994. They even have flounder championships on that river. Could I catch one? No. Yeah. I made another attempt last year as well. This is Eastbourne Harbour. You can't actually fish inside the harbour, uh, but you can fish to the outer side, I think. But actually it's quite interesting here looking at this outer harbour in Eastbourne. If you see those gullies, the theory is, and I say theory because we didn't catch one here either, but look at those gullies. When the tide starts flooding through, that's a fantastic little spot to roll your lead into. And obviously you need to fish quite light here as well. Uh, but things like harbour rag, ragworm, peeler crab as well when they start to molt in spring, another option. May need to cut the size down a little bit. Lots of juices flowing out of those peeler crabs. Those little white rag as well, always a good option for the flounder, along with lugworm as well, which we were using. And they like a little bit of movement in the bait. And as I've always said on the channel as well, it is worth coming down to these sort of marks at low tide. You can see those fish holding areas there where you might want to put your bait. The other good thing about flounder, of course, is that they do come in in quite shallow water and sight fishing is always an option. And I have seen them here. I've still not managed to catch one. Flounder as well will come into fresh water as well. uh, And that's why they're usually quite easy to catch. <laughs> not for this sort of water angler though. A little bit of movement now in the water. You can see it creeping in over there. And that's just what we want. Starting to cover these uh, sandbanks and push through the gullies. And if it's safe, it's definitely worth coming down just to look, see if you can see any signs of fish. And that's fish moving themselves. Flounder will be in very skinny water, very um, shallow water. <laughs> okay, bear with me on this. That is a Korean lure that I got sent. You can fill it with bait or oil and ground baiting is actually quite a good technique for flounder. In a minute I'm going to chop up some um, bluey and just throw it into that channel. Um, but you can fill that with pellets or you can fill that with bait and it's got like a little attractor thing. I mean, I've just, I'm just having a play. You can see there, those beads will float it up um, and then you can have a weight on the end if you want. And then in addition, just your normal three hook flappers with or without beads or sequins, lug, rag, white rag, harbour rag. Rolling it into those food holding areas. Uh, it's a good time to experiment as well. Things like spoons will catch flounders and believe it or not I've actually seen one caught on a J11, a plug. Uh, they can be quite aggressive feeders and sometimes it's worth a little bit of movement uh, to entice a take. But this is all theory because for these sort of venues I've just got a little bass rod that I use. Three ounce lead, two ounce. Um, and then if it's really calm it's just a case of sticking a one ounce lead on. No joy last year, but we walked back onto the beach, gave it another go. <laughs> this time tactics was slightly different. Uh, back on the cascade rigs and three hook flappers. Uh, we'll come on to how we use those in a minute. Flounders can obviously be found on the open sea as well. 
that's where our hunt continued. Using the lugworms still. Oh, I prefer the fresh lugworms for these. Maybe it's a case of a waiting game. They don't mind a little bit more choppy conditions. I've certainly caught them in the past. Not for three or four years though. One of the advantages of filming your fishing is uh, you can look back at little mistakes you've made and I think I've made one here. i uh, be interested to know what you think of this one because so we reeled in this little flatfish and I'm assuming it was a place I gave, never gave it a second thought just really wanted to get it back in it's tiny but then when I looked back at the footage and thought about it I wondered was it a dab? And we know how to identify those dabs with the rough skin to the back and that little semicircle on the dorsal but I just rushed it so much and I'll just pause and I'll just pause the footage here and you can tell me what you think they are a little bit soft these worms on the three hook flapper because uh, they're not clipped all I've done is I've just Ever so slightly, just put some wrap on them, bait elastic wrap, just a little bit of bait elastic wrap on those, just to keep them firm on the line. Ooh. Quite a frantic start as usual, just along along the next couple of groins, two really, really top class anglers there. I won't do the name dropping thing, um, but they've won world titles, put it that way. <laughs> so I know that I'm in the right place, I think that's what I'm thinking. Well, we talked about the Shimano Speedmaster being a classic. Uh, this one really is a classic. <laughs> every beach angler, every match angler would have known what one of these is. So just a real simple multiplier, casting multiplier with brake blocks. Really good. <laughs> what more can you say? You'll get good distances with this. And it's a good practical fishing reel as well. And I actually picked this one up, I picked that one up, second hand, 50 quid. In pretty good condition, had all the line, even had a leader on it. Got some good quality line on that as well.
Uh, typical south coast conditions here, fishing over shingles, a few little sandbanks. And we have got a fish on here. Surprisingly, although we're using this HPB, uh, remember in the last video I mentioned that it's missing a good old section of the tip. Um, but it is surprising, can actually recognise the bites. I'm not getting excited about this one though. I don't even think I don't even think this is a small flounder that we're after. Well, you can check this one out here. This is a whiting, but it's missing an eye. How on earth does this thing survive in the harsh environment with one eye? Now, I think this has previously lost it uh, maybe a week or two ago by the looks of it. Probably from a, a return fish from an angler, unfortunately, or maybe, maybe it's been hooked. Maybe a net, but I think more likely on this mark, maybe within the last 24 hours or so. Look at that. It's hard enough being a whiting, isn't it? And then to only have one one eye. Okay, so no flounder. Enjoying this 7HT multiplier. So for those that are interested in the casting, uh, this isn't really, I suppose, a full pendulum. Best advice if you want to learn pendulum, get a get a coach physically show you it. You're setting your drop, swinging the lead out. This is all setting up so you can compress the rod has been mentioned I'm a little bit low with my cast but you're pulling through punching with the right hand pulling a bit with the left hand and with that new 7HT uh, half reasonable cast and it's a different day this is a couple of days ago now I promise you things are going to get a little bit more interesting at last So we've got the four ounce lead on this, the, the lightweight Synetic. And then just sort of experimenting a little bit with the, um, i change the bait on these, but experimenting on the free hook flapper. This hook here, we'll put a worm on that, but there's no beads, just the sequin and the stop knot. The next one up there, that's got one bead on. I'll give it a little bit of buoyancy. And they're actually surprisingly buoyant, those beads. I mean, without just the, on the hook there, that'll, That'll take that right off the bottom, and then, then the top one we've got a couple of beads on, and that'll float that lug up okay. Lead gets buried a little bit. We've left it out for a while. Oh, that is a good fish. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a flounder. And that's a fair old size, that one. Look at that. Yes. The flounder we wanted. Nice 
Nice, what a flounder. Well, that is a decent sized flounder, especially for around here. It does have orange spots, which you'll find in the place, but also a flounder has these bony bits here on the middle of the, well, it's like the top half of the um, lateral line. Um, so that is a flounder and a very good one at that. Oh, I'll say it's one of the biggest ones I've had, especially off the beach here. So I'm going to eat it. Normally estuary fish don't taste that nice, but this is an open sea here. And I think that'd be quite good. Yeah. Well, I wanted a flounder and I got one. Well, that was the target species. We got a flounder straight away, first cast. It was on the middle of those three hooks with the floating beads as well. Um, but I'm made up with that. I know it's only a flounder, but flounders do bring back a lot of memories actually usually the first sea fish that a lot of people catch and um, you know they're easy to catch but we did want one and we got one <laughs> I'm made up with that well using these beads little floaty beads I find these these particular ones three of those from keep a single lug work just off so what's your experiences with a flounder was it, like a lot of people, your first ever sea fish that you've caught? Or was there something else? I'd love to know in the comments. And please keep up those comments down below. I really enjoyed chatting with you. We've got a lot of regular subscribers and it's worth scrolling through those comments. Uh, we're getting some good tips in and some great stories as well from this country and abroad. And what was your first ever fish then? If it wasn't a flounder, mine was actually a little wrasse, a little ballon wrasse. Uh, and my first decent fish was a silver eel. There's probably a few of you out there that have had a silver eel as one of your first fish. Yeah! <laughs> I don't normally get too excited about a flounder. I'm quite pleased with that.